Our Heavenly Father, again we ask that the Holy Spirit will teach us as we study Daniel chapter 9. Help us to see how the Messiah came and to die for us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Daniel chapter 9, as we continue the study. Now we already saw that Daniel chapter 9, we saw Daniel praying. Praying for repentance, praying for forgiveness, praying for mercy, and praying for God's grace. And we saw that Daniel was putting himself with the other people. That's not to say Daniel uh, had sinned or somehow he committed sin, but he is putting himself with others. In other words, he is representing the whole nation of Israel. So in that sense, he can say, we have sinned as a nation. So nation becomes one entity. All right. And some individuals in that nation may, have, may not have sinned, but as a whole, they have sinned. So that's what Daniel was dealing with. So this prayer was not just for himself. It was for the whole nation of Israel. Now, but I want you to notice the reason why Daniel is praying this prayer. And from, from verse 16, we can see the motive why Daniel is praying. Verse 16, the Bible says, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy what? What does the Bible say? It says, from thy city. Very interesting. Daniel is kind of reminding God, your city, Jerusalem, the holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy what? People are becoming reproach to all that are about us. So here Daniel is praying for what? God. Let not the city of Jerusalem stay desolate and become shame in the eyes of the heathens and the Babylonians and uh, other nations. And verse 17, Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon what? Thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. Very interesting. So right there you can see Daniel is praying for the city of Jerusalem, which includes God's people, and for what? God's sanctuary. Now you remember Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, we saw that what? The city was besieged. That tells us that city was destroyed. And the vessels from the holy temple, the temple of God, were taken to the, uh, taken, taken to the gods of Babylon. So, you can almost see, watch this, this is very interesting. In Daniel's time, the city and the sanctuary was destroyed. When the Bible says city is destroyed, immediately you got to think of what? God's people, Israel. So when you look at the whole thing, it's, it's very interesting. The book of Daniel is about God's sanctuary and God's people and its relationship to judgment. So what we have here is a, a clear application that we can draw that all these things apply to the end of time. This is the reason why, my friends, this is the reason why, my friends, when the book of Daniel is open, we're going to study this when we study Daniel chapter 11 and 12, when the book of Daniel is open, 1798, what happens? The understanding of Daniel began to increase, understanding the Bible began to increase, then what happens? God's people, in terms of understanding of God's truth, is restored, not that God didn't have any people during dark ages, yes He did, but in terms of uh, having, God, having the, the people of God that, that, that leads or it moves for the second coming of Christ. And then the sanctuary message was restored. So there is a, a history repeat application here. Nevertheless, again we can see, He's praying for 
the city Jerusalem, and the sanctuary. Verse 18, the Bible says, O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes. And behold our what? Desolation. Very interesting. The Bible used the word what? Or Daniel used the word desolation. Desolation. And you know what? When you compare that to Daniel chapter 8, and when you study about the little horn, that little horn, it did what? It desolate God's sanctuary, and it desolate God's people. Isn't that right? And these two are exactly what Daniel's praying. So somehow, there's, that's, that's where Daniel misunderstood about the vision of evening and morning, which is 2,000 days. So here we have, <coughs> the Bible says, And the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercy. In other words, God, we have no right, we're not worthy even to ask of you this great blessing of restoration. Not because of our righteousness, because of thy great mercies. Verse 19, O oh Lord, hear, O oh Lord, forgive, O oh Lord, hearken, and do. He's pleading right there. Hear, O oh God, forgive us, listen to us, and please grant us the restoration. Defer not for thine own sake, O oh my God, for the city and thy people are what? Called by thy name. So right there. It is crystal clear what Daniel was praying for. He was not making his personal confession. He was not making his personal repentance. He was not doing any personal devotions here. He is praying in praying in behalf of his people, the city, and the sanctuary. Because those things are very important. Very important. Now, verse 20. Daniel was not even finishing praying. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Now let's not get confused when the Bible says he was confessing my sin. Now, of course, we can argue that, you know, did Daniel ever sin, or he ha he, if he hasn't. Um, the Bible says, all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, for sure he was his sin. But, you know, when God is not, and let me, say, let me say something, when God is not responding to his promise, perhaps Daniel, this way I can assume what Daniel is experiencing. You know, perhaps Daniel sinned. I do not know. But just based upon, from study of the book of Daniel, how Daniel was, how he was faithful to God. So based upon that, let's assume that he has not sinned. Then why does he say, my sin? You know, as human beings, when God does not, so to speak, answer our prayer, or answer the promise which God has given, Sometimes it causes us to think that it is because something about my sin that that changed God's promise, because it's conditional. So there is aspect what we call searching his heart to find out if there's any sin that he needs to confess. But nevertheless, we saw that first of all he's praying in behalf of the people most of it. But anyhow, that can be, um, it can be argued, but uh, simply, the whole picture is he's praying for his people. Now, the Bible says, verse 21, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man, Gabriel, 
whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly what? swiftly touch me about the time of the evening of lesion. You know, that's very interesting. You know why? Let's just say that um, Gabriel came down from Orion. Let's just say, because we know from the spirit of prophecy that you know, God's second coming will come through Orion. And let's just say heaven is in Orion, that area, okay? Let's just say that. That's many, many millions of light years away. Okay? I mean, that's just so far. And it, if, you know, if, you know, if you fly, if you move 186,000 miles per second, it will still take millions of miles, I mean, million years away. The light years away. But can you imagine? You will see, angel said, when Daniel began to pray, God told Gabriel, okay, Gabriel, go down and tell Daniel. And tell him, help him to understand what he's, what he's misunderstanding. So when you calculate how long this prayer was, just reading it, some people say 20 minutes. Let's just say, it may be less than that when you read it, right? Let's, let's just say it's 20 minutes. That means in 20 minutes, this Gabriel angel came all the way down from, let, if, if the heaven is Orion, came all the way down from Orion in 20 minutes. He was flying 186,000 miles times probably 186,000 miles times 186,000 times in order for him to come down that fast. It's not even, it's beyond speed of light. Some people say, some people like to call it speed of thought. What the, I mean, there was some time that it took, it, 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 it took, it gave you some time to come down anyhow, but it was super, super fast. I thought that was very interesting. Nevertheless, let's continue. Angel came down, verse 22, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and what? Understanding. Verse 23, at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter, and consider the what? Vision. Right there it becomes very important. It becomes very important. Consider the vision. Which vision is it? Which vision is it talking about? So we conclude. There was a particular vision that Daniel saw that he did not understand, plus he misunderstand. Okay? Therefore did Gabriel came down to make Daniel understand in the area that he misunderstood. Which vision that Gabriel came down to make Daniel to understand? Based upon Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 8, verse 26, And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for what? Many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up to the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. So by looking at that, verse 27 coming after verse, after verse 26, verse 26 talks about 2,300 days when you compare it to verse 14 of Daniel chapter 8. The vision of the evening and the morning is 2,300 days. So, angel Gabriel came down to help Daniel to understand the area that Daniel misunderstood regarding 2,300 days. Notice the, how Daniel is praying. He says, what? Verse 18, Oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolation. Why is he using that word desolation there? Again, I, I mentioned this before. Daniel 8, 13, the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. When Daniel heard this, what was he thinking? He was probably thinking, 
God's sanctuary on earth and the people of Israel being trod underfoot, being desolated. And how long will this continue? 2,300 days. So we can see he was misunderstanding this vision. So Gabriel came down to make Daniel to understand not so much the fulfillment of 2,300 days, but so much that reminding Daniel that this vision begins with restoration of Jerusalem. Daniel, Daniel probably thinking that God's people will be restored at the end of 2,300 days. But no, no. God's people will be restored in the beginning of 2,300 days. So, watch this. Verse 24. 70 weeks are what? Determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Stop right there. Seventy weeks are what determined thy determined upon thy people and upon thy what holy city. Right there you have people and holy city, because that's what Daniel was asking. What's going to happen to the people of God? What's going to happen to God's holy city? So seventy weeks are determined. That means seventy weeks are. The word determined also means cut off. Cut off. Okay. Cut off from what? 70 weeks are cut off. When you look at the whole thing here, you'll see. You can only understand this. 70 weeks are determined or 70 weeks are cut off only based upon uh, uh, the only way that we can understand this is that that you understand that 70 weeks are cut off. You can only understand this because the angel Gabriel came down to Daniel to, to make him understand 2,300 days. So 70 weeks are somehow connected to 2,300 days. Because the angel Gabriel is putting them together. That is based upon Consider the vision. That vision, particular vision, is 2,300 days. Now, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. All that is talking about, you know what it's talking about? Basically, all that is talking about is the coming of the Messiah. Christ came to, to die for our transgression, to make an end of sins, to bring about rec reconciliation, to bring about everlasting righteousness, okay, fulfill the prophecies, and to anoint the Most Holy. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, but just focus right now upon 70 weeks are determined for God's people and the Holy City. Verse 25. So 24 gives uh, Daniel the overview, so to speak. The main point, the big picture. 70 weeks within it, It has something to do with the Messiah for our sin. And it has something to do with God's people and Holy City. 25. What's the first word? Know, therefore, and understand. Know, therefore, and understand. When the Bible uses the word know and understand, that's make, that is making emphasis. In other words, you better know this. That, what's the next word? From. That word from right there is the key word in that text in terms of from what point? 70 weeks. It's like this. Whenever God gives us time prophecy, prophetic time, 
whether it is uh, whether it is 1,290 days or 1,335 or 2,300 days or even uh, 1,260 days, whatever. Okay, whenever God gives us time prophecy, He always gives us the beginning point because without giving us the beginning point, how are we supposed to understand the end point? Do you understand that? Yes. Example is Daniel 12, verse 11. Watch this. Daniel 12, verse 11. It says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So, the Bible gives us from this time and onward, you can calculate 1,290 days. Now, or sometime the Bible, the Bible says, look at this. He will indicate Daniel 7.25. They shall be given into His hand. Meaning, God's people will be persecuted in the hands of papacy. How? Huh? Time, times, and a dividing time. Okay? Time, times, and a dividing time. What is this? When you look at this, this Suruhon power is diverse from others. Why? Because this is the only power that combines church as Christian church and state power. So, when is the duration of this Luderhorn power as political plus ecclesiastical, meaning Christian power, put together? How long was that? We count from 538 to 1798, because that's when the church became political power, and 1798 when the political power was taken away. So the Bible gives us indication how this will be the beginning point and the end point. But usually, God gives us the beginning point. Let us know the end point. Another example. When you study Revelation 20, it talks about 1,000 years. And 1,000 years begins with what? Taking the saints to heaven. And 1,000 years will be finished by what? Resurrection of the wicked. And they will be destroyed. Okay? So God gives us, I mean, if He doesn't give us the end point, He does give us what? The beginning point. Okay? And then God will indicate to us that what will happen at the end of that time prophecy. He will tell us the beginning point, the event. He will tell us what the event is in the beginning point. And He will tell us what will happen at the end of the time prophecy. But what is more important? The beginning point. That's right. So we can calculate, so we can predict, you see. We can exactly know what will take place in the future. So again, 70 weeks of prophecy. How do you know, how do we know when this will begin? Where is the beginning point? In Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to what? Restore and what? Build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The streets shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. So right there it gives you the beginning point beginning event that will help us to mark the beginning point of 70 weeks of prophecy. Did you get that? No. Okay. Do you understand that whenever God gives us time prophecy, He needs to give us the beginning point? Do you understand that? Okay. Now, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city. Right there you have time, what? Prophecy, right? Where is the beginning point of that time prophecy? Right. 
So verse 25, Know therefore, understand, from the time when the commandment, other word for commandment is decree, when the decree goes forth to restore Jerusalem, and what? What's that? That's when it began, that's right. When the decree is go forth, in other words, a decree is made, okay, Israel people, go back to Israel and rebuild Jerusalem. When the decree go forth, then it begins 70 weeks. Do you understand that? It begins 70 weeks. Okay? Now, the problem that we're facing is this. Daniel chapter 8, Verse 14, unto 2,300 days, then, the, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Where's the beginning point of this? Where is the beginning point of this? Hmm? Okay, but how do we know? How do we know the beginning point of 2,300 days that God gave to us? There's one way to show this, but you have to do some explanation. Not exactly, not exactly, but there's one way to show this. One way is, Daniel, I heard this from someone, Daniel 8, look at verse 13 again. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint, and said unto that certain saint, which spake, How long? I'm, go I'm not going to read the italicized words for sake of what I'm about to say, okay? How long the what? Vision. The daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. We can say, how long is the vision of daily? Or we can also say, how long is the vision, meaning the whole thing? But especially, daily and transgression of desolation, trod underfoot the sanctuary and the host. How long is the vision? What vision? If you take that word vision as the whole thing, vision, then what we have is this. Uh, you understand. Daniel chapter 8 and verse 1. In the third year of the reign of the king Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. So here Daniel called the whole thing what? A vision. So let me put it just simply this way. The question is, how long is this vision? From what? Ram, he goat, little horn, until the time that the God's people will be persecuted. How long is this? And we know, what is it? Medo Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, paper Rome until when? 1798. So, the question is, how long is this? How long is this? You know what? It is approximately what? 2,300 years. From Medo Persia all the way down to 1798. It's approximately 2,300 years, if you count all of that. That's one way to give us the uh, close calculation. Or the the um, to help us to understand uh, from what point perhaps this two thousand three hundred begins from Middle Persia. It doesn't begin with the, the restoration of Israel. Now, without chapter nine, okay, just with chapter eight of Daniel, that's the kind of picture that we get. If we take that word, how long is how long shall be the vision? in terms of the whole vision of Daniel chapter 8. Yes, without 2,300 days. Yeah. Okay, the question is, what do we do with Daniel chapter 8, verse 26, when it says, and the vision of the evening and morning? That one, I still have to say, that specific vision of 2,300 days, the evening and the morning. So the God specifically identified that vision is that particular vision. So, verse, verse 13 is according to 2,800 days, right? It's connected to 2,800 days. That's right, that's right. So, what happens is this. What happens is this. When we talk about the vision 
putting, meet a person, I mean, ram, he go, little horn. So there's one aspect that God is saying, this particular uh, time prophecy re regarding 2,300 days, that aspect is sealed up. But what comes before that, the events that will uh, inspire, that aspect, some of them are not sealed. Because God already revealed them. Middle Persia, Greece. At least God gave us a star, a jump star, so to speak. So we know how to calculate it. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. You cannot say, because 26 is, I mean, it's too specific. There's a connection. That's right. There is connection. There is connection. So we can almost say, there's a vision from Ram all the way down to Little Horn. And God's sanctuary in the host being trod underfoot. And then there is a vision to explain about how long this will be. That's 2,300 days. And at the end of that vision, 2,000 days, there is the event of sanctuary be Christ. So there's a little bit different. There is a connection, but I see it's a little bit different because God specifically says evening and the morning. And you cannot find that word. Other times the word vision is mentioned in Daniel 8. Okay. We can discuss more on this when we uh, have a discussion on Daniel chapter 9. Now, that's just one way to help us. Just give us... Uh, Roundabout, how long? Okay, so 2,300 days. We can almost guess it will begin in times of what? Middle Persia. How long? Now, but in Daniel chapter nine, 70 weeks are mentioned, and the 70 weeks. What is 70 weeks? How many years is this? One week is six days. Right? 70 is seven times 70, 490, right? So this, we're, so we're looking at 490 years. Do you understand that? Very interesting. 490 years is given to who? God's people. 490 years is given to God's people. Do you remember what Peter said? Lord, I give three times when, when somebody did wrong to me. Is that good enough? And Jesus wept. You must forgive them seven times 70. So seven times 70. 490. And God has given them 490. You know what that means? God is giving them the what? The perfect opportunity to repent. That's right. Perfect opportunity to repent. 490 years. 7 times 70. Very interesting. And you know, 7 represents perfection or completion. On top of that, 7D. Uh, we understand that number 10 has connection to like judgment. So it's a, it's a complete, perfect judgment, but yet 490, perfect opportunity for them to be, uh, for them to repent at the same time they're being judged. So that time starts after 70 weeks, right? 70 weeks? No, no. 70 weeks begins from the time the decree went forth. Decree goes forth to restore Jerusalem. When was that? Okay. So they weren't persecuted all during that time? Who? God's people. God's people. You mean before 70 weeks? You mean before 70 weeks? During 70 weeks. During 70 weeks that 70 weeks is for Israel. Literal Israel, not symbolic Israel. That 70 weeks is literal Israel, not symbolic Israel. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the, the during dark age. That's not what it's talking about. That 70 weeks only belongs to yeah. Jewish people. Okay, that's 70 weeks, yeah, because we, we understand that Jewish people were God's people. Okay, um, even the time that Jesus died on the cross. Now, what do we have here? We have 70 weeks of prophecy, and this 70 weeks of prophecy begins with, the decree goes forth to restore Jerusalem. But this aspect right here, The beginning, listen, because Gabriel came to Daniel to make him understand the vision of 2,300 days, because that, 
when Gabriel gave Daniel time prophecy regarding 70 weeks and giving him the beginning point of 70 weeks, now that beginning point of 70 weeks becomes the beginning point of 2,300 days. One more time. Because, Daniel, because Gabriel came down to Daniel to make him understand 2,300 days. And in order for Gabriel to make Daniel understand 2,300 days, he mentioned 70 weeks. So somehow in Gabriel's mind, or for Daniel, the 70 weeks will help Daniel to understand, have a relief of mind, knowing that God's people will be restored. And Gabriel said, this 70 weeks will begin with what? Going forth of the queen to restore Jerusalem. Therefore, the beginning event of 70 weeks, which is to restore Jerusalem, the queen that went forth to restore Jerusalem, that beginning point now also belongs to 2,300 days. Okay? If you don't get this, we'll discuss more on this when we study. But just simple as this. The beginning point of 70 weeks is the same as the beginning point of 2,300 days. How do we know that? Because the angel came down to explain the vision. Yes? Okay, the question is, 2,300 days since the Bible says shut up, right? Shut up. Then how is it that the angel came down to make Daniel understand? Does that's the question. Now, this aspect you have to explain. Okay, you have to explain. Again, I, even though I use the word uh, make Daniel understand 2,300 days, it's really to make Daniel understand his misunderstanding regarding 2,300 days. Angel did not come down to help Daniel to see what's going to happen at the end of 2,300 days. That was not his purpose. I mean, the only thing that God mentioned, saints will be cleansed. Based upon how Daniel is praying, based upon how Daniel is praying, we can see that Daniel is misunderstanding the vision of 2,300 days. So that misunderstanding aspect Gabriel came down to explain. But at the same time, taking the opportunity, God gave Daniel and to us the beginning point of 2,300 days. That was all. That was absolutely all that God has done. Just show us the beginning point of 2,300 days. Yes. What happens at the end of 70 weeks? God's people, Jewish people, are no longer God's people. Okay, don't get mixed up with... No, no. So, so what happens is, is this. There are 70 years that Israelites or Jewish people were under captivity, right? Of Babylon, right? For 70 years. 70 years, okay? It's not 70 weeks. 70 years. And when, when that is over, guess what? There will be decreed. After that, decree will go forth to restore what? Jerusalem. From that point, another 70, but now it's 70 weeks will begin. Okay? So we have 70 years, Babylonian captivity. When that is over, Jerusalem being restored by decreed. And from that point, 70 weeks, 490 years begins. Yeah. After 70 years, that's right. Not exactly at the end of 70 years, but after 70 weeks, what happened? At the end of 70 weeks. No, beginning of 70 weeks. But at the end of the restoration No, the restoration is, will be completed, I believe, uh, within uh, 7 years. Or let me just check real quick. Uh, 49 years. 
70 weeks. 70 weeks is the 490 years that God has given to Israel for the last opportunity to repent. Uh, transition, only transition. Now after 490 years is over, now the transition is the gospel is now going out to the Gentiles. Now, now the Gentiles can be part of God's people, spiritual Israel. That's 490 years. Okay, that's the big picture. But the Jerusalem and the temple is already uh, restored. The uh, beginning part of 70 weeks. Do you find the end of 70 years? Mm -hmm. 70 After 70 years. Then that begins 70 weeks. That's right. That's right. But not, not right after one another. No. There's a little bit of a gap. There's a time that the transition time of God's people now being able to go back. Okay? To Israel. Yeah. What does that represent? Okay, 70 weeks, how many weeks is that? 70 weeks, right? How many days in one week? Seven, seven days. days, right? So seven times, how many weeks? Seven. 70. So how many days is that? That's how you get 490 days. And we know that days equal to now years. So that's, that's how we get 490 years. Now, Daniel chapter 9. But now we have to determine what decree is this. Okay? This decree is to what? Restore what? And to build what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay? Now, when you look at the Bible, there were three decrees that went forth. Okay. When you look at the Bible, there were three decrees went forth. But out of three, which one is uh, most valid? You see, the decree, I mean, you know, after, there were, now let me just give you the the list of these kings of Medo-Persia, okay? You remember Darius, he was the first one, right? I mean, there was a king before him, but Darius from after Babylon, you understand? Darius, the Mede, he reigned from 538 to 536 BC. And then um, we see that he made a decree to go, you know, he let um, Jeroboam to go back, uh, to go back to Israel and start restoring. And what happened was, that was a time that, um, that's, began, that's when the, the, the restoration began to take place. But it, the decree didn't go forth right away to restore the whole nation of Israel. So what happened is this. The very first decree was just to go back to Jerusalem and to restore the temple. But not the whole nation of Israel. But the Bible says what? To restore what? Build and to restore Jerusalem. When the Bible says Jerusalem, that means what? Restore the nation. Restore the nation. That means Jerusalem is a capital city, isn't it? That means to restore the nation of Judah or Israel, okay? So the decree has to be... There are, there are other decrees that went out to restore the temple, but not so much the whole... In other words, they thought the temple was beautiful, and perhaps the King Darius had a sympathy towards Jewish people regarding their God. So he's saying, okay, just go back and restore the temple, you know? And, and may you have a, a place where you can invite God's presence. But not so much the Jerusalem as a nation, meaning restore the government and the system of, the political system of Israel. After Darius, we have Cambyse. Sorry, after Darius, we have Cyrus. Sorry, 536 to 530. I'm sorry, Darius is just simply uh, 
that's when uh, Daniel was cast into lions then. Sorry, it was Cyrus, sorry, forgive me. It was Cyrus that gave the decree to allow the people of God to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. Not Darius. Not Darius, sorry, Cyrus. The date Cyrus is 536 to 530 BC. Cyrus. You remember how Cyrus was so impressed because his name was already written in the book of Isaiah. So that really uh, uh, gave him the, uh, the divine guidance to, to be, be open-hearted and to have soft heart for Jewish people. And after Cambyse, sorry, after Cyrus, we have now Cambyse, 530 BC to 522 BC. Don't worry, I will make a copy of this and I'll give it to you. Cambyse is, is called Ahasuerus in Ezra chapter 4 verse 6. And he's the one that, um, during that time, Uh, something happened. Let me just read to you the mix. Rebel of Samaritans frustrated building all the days of Cyrus until Darius first. The forces of evil were held in check and the Jews were at liberty to work for years, but proved unwilling. The Samaritans grew increasingly bolder and the Jews began to question whether they should rebuild. The temple workmen returned to the ordinary job. So during Cambyse, there was a disruption uh, regarding rebuilding the temple and perhaps some other things in Israel. By the way, so who uh, became hindrance for the Jewish people? Samaritans. Now you understand why Samaritans and Jewish people, they hate each other. It comes back, it goes back all the way to this history. They hinder. Not only because this, but of course, Samaritans are a mixed group. They have Jewish blood and they have some Canaanite blood and some other heathen blood. So Jewish people consider them to be dogs. But anyhow, after Cambyse, we have false Samaritans, 522 BC. But he only reigned seven months. We call them false Samaritans because uh, he just claimed himself to be the king. Okay. Israel was in a conditions in the early reign of Darius. One, Israel was sorry. Israel was in a pitiful state, both spiritually and temporally. They had lost sight of God's purpose in restoring them to Judea. Haggai and Zechariah were raised at this time of great need, Zechariah began his ministry 16 years after return from captivity in 525 19 BC. He was born in Babylon, Babylonia or else he would have been a very young prophet. So during this time they were still trying to rebuild, uh, they're in the process of their, uh, building the temple, but yet they had a hindrance again from the Samaritans. But here we have Darius first, or they call it the great Darius first, or his death pests, 520 to 486 BC. The circumstances of the decree of 520 BC are recorded in Ezra 5 and 6. The people's response to the prophet's message was wholehearted. They labored dil diligently on the temple. See, still they're working on the temple. And they, they sought also a life and heart renewal. They were assured that they would be greatly rewarded, that the temple would be glorious, and that the desire of all nations would come to the temple. The temple was completed in Darius' sixth, sixth year, 515 BC. So even 515 BC, the temple was completed. Zechariah's message came two months after Haggai's last message when it's Zechariah's permission. So when you read Zechariah, uh, when you read Haggai, all those minor prophets, they were, those messages were written in times of restoration of the temple. Are you listening? 
Okay? Just keep that in mind. So we can bring in Zechariah and Haggai when we study Daniel chapter 9. So what do we see here? The first decree was simply what? Restore the temple. But not to rebuild the Jerusalem. Okay? So Darius first, he simply just restored the decree regarding the restoring the temple. Now, Xerxes, 485 to 465 BC. 485 to 465 BC. Called Ahasuerus. This king was the husband of Esther. In the book of Esther. That book of Esther was time with restoration of the temple the rest of the, in, the, in the process or in, in its way to restore Jerusalem. So where, you know, now you know where Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther is located in history. They all are contemporary to each other in somewhat. The crisis of the death decree was brought on by Haman about 474 or 3 BC. Most of the Jews had chosen to remain in Babylon and had not taken advantage of Darius' decree. God, through Zechariah, exhorted exhort them to leave and warn the judgments to come upon Babylon. It means Babylon as Medo Persia. Zechariah 2 7 through 9. After Xerxes, we have Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes is the one that gave the full decree to restore Jerusalem. Ezra led back more captives in 457 BC. What happened in 457 BC? Then there was a further period of 10 years until Nehemiah arrived in 446 BC and the commencement of the rebuilding the wall. So what happened was, uh, this is, I believe, Ezra chapter nine, chapter 7. We won't go through that the next hour. But what we have here is King Artaxerxes. He's the one that made the full decree to go back to rebuild Jerusalem, not just the temple. This is the reason why we take the third decree, not the first one, to restore the temple, right? Not the second one. Why? It was re-resurrecting okay it was only resurrecting the first decree that was not it was not in going in, in its force okay so he re restored it but the third decree is to restore the whole city of Jerusalem and that decree was given in 457 BC this is the reason why we take 457 BC as the beginning year and I believe the spring of 457 BC, that was the beginning year of 2,300 days. Let's leave for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we continue to study, please help us to understand. Because now we know that this is the message for Adventist people 